Welcome to Documentation Office Hours. It's the 13th of January, 2022. Great to have everybody here. Remind you that we abide by the Jenkins Code of Conduct. So topics that I had for today, news, outstanding PR reviews. There are other topics we could consider like uh, She Code Africa, uh, idea review, and so that's for the Contributhon and the New Year's blog post, the New Year blog post. Uh, and then there was the, let's see, topic that I might have, which is site previews on www.jenkins.io pull requests. That's a fun one to see. And then using Gitpod for Jenkins.io pull requests development. Any other topics others would like to add to the agenda? Um, yes, so um, I have a couple of questions around um, new contributors um, for Jenkins documentation. Okay, go ahead. So how about we capture the questions? We may not answer them immediately, but ask okay. your questions and let's, uh, let's put them on the agenda. Um, so the first question is um, good first issue is about um, good first issues on um, Jenkins.io. So I checked and I noticed that um, the last the the most recent issue there is I think from June last year. So I wanted to ask um, how are those updated? So if you have new contributors right now that want to contribute to Jenkins documentation, they might see that and probably think, oh, maybe this is outdated or, you know, this is anybody, you know, updating this or things like that. So um, that's the first question. Then the second question is, um, do we have any documentation or any video on how to set up Jenkins.io on Windows. Currently. Good. Okay, great. All right. So let's this, those are both good candidates to steal time with this one, this using Gitpod. So that's good. All right. So let's talk to those. Right. Any any other questions, you know? Um no, this is not a question, actually. This is um, just me. So I was thinking of starting a blog, um, a series of blog posts on Jenkins. So um, I just wanted to, um, yeah, run that by you. Then also possible topics, because um, I would like, um, or I don't know if it would be possible for you to review them um, once I start working on them. You and yeah. Doug also. Very good. Okay. So that was why I asked um, the second question because actually I got a new PC, so I have to redo the installation of Jenkins or I this be set up and all that. So that's why I was asking if we have any documentation or video, um, so that if not, probably I could document the process while I'm doing it again, and if possible, do a video while I'm doing it again, so we can have that. Great, very good. All right, so let's, let's, I think, I think that's a, let's put it as new contributors to Jenkins Docs and let's try to answer those questions. Very good. Any others who have topics they want to add? Okay, well then I propose, let's put, Meg, would you be okay if we put Zenob's question first? I was going, wondering about that. I think that's an excellent idea. Okay, great. So let's do that. All right. So brief, brief review of news, just so that you're aware. Jenkins 2.319.2 has released. It's a security release. And uh, planning is in progress for Google Summer of Code. And planning is, oops, 
planning is starting soon. Ah. Planning is starting soon for, where'd it go now there? For She Code Africa Contributhon. So now on to Zinab's question. So as a new contributor, let's first look at the good first issues. And you're absolutely correct, Zinab. It's not uh, as current as it should be. So on what her question was, hey, one way to decide how to help the Jenkins project is look at the list of issues on documentation and look for things with the label good first issue like this. See, and my screen shared, right? Yes. Okay, so you can see yes. it. Um, so what I okay. What I did was um I I searched for how to contribute to Jenkins on Google. And um it took me to that um documentation page. There's a documentation page. And on that page, there is a link that says, okay, you can get started here. So I clicked on that link. And when I clicked on the link, it took me, it brought me to GitHub. But the most recent issue on that page, it brought me to um, was 21st, so was around June last year, June, 2021. So that was what I did. So I don't right. know if that's the same with this. I don't know, or probably I don't know. I, I think it is. I think I think the navigation you used took you to what what I would expect is good first issues. And here the most recent one is June of 2021. Yeah, exactly. So so I think I think this matches. And what yeah. that says is we haven't done a triage, a review of the issues to see if there are others in the list that are good first issues. So for mm -hmm. example, this one is a good first issue because I just read it. Um, mm -hmm. This one is probably a good first issue. And this one might be a good first issue and That's probably about it for now. So I'm going to label those as good first issue. So we address one of the challenges so that if I'm lucky, that will apply the label. It did. Very good. Okay. Yes. So, so now we have a few more, but, but the challenge is real. We probably ought to put a uh, sort of a once a month to place a monthly reminder to update the good first issues labels. Because if we don't do it, contributors arrive and see, oh, hey, I, I don't know how to help and things are outdated here where this, some of these really are pretty reasonable first issues. Mm -hmm. Good, okay, so, so that was fairly easy but not the ultimate solution because now this was your what i think is the more daunting challenge how do i do jenkins.io development on windows yeah and based on our past experience i'd almost go the other direction and say we may be better served by teaching people how to use a pre-configured development environment over a web browser so that they could from their Windows machine or their Android tablet or their Mac OS or their Linux or FreeBSD, they could still do development. And there's this tool called Gitpod that allows that. Nice. So let's see if I've got this. Yeah, here it is. So this thing was added by Jean-Marc Meeson that provides a configuration automation for people who want to use Gitpod. And what Gitpod is, is a Gitpod is a hosted development environment in the cloud. And they're willing to donate these hosted environments um, up to a certain number of hours per month to people who subscribe. Okay. And so, so the trick technique then is 
I go to gitpod.io and now I have to log in. <laughs> so, and I think I did it with GitHub. Yeah, so I have, this is my environment. And now when I do, if I say, oh, I want a new project and I'm going to look at, oh, I have to change this so that I can see Jenkins.io. Next. No, nope, that's not it. What I've got to do is I've got to teach it. Nope, that's correct. I've got to teach it to let me see Jenkins, my, my project on Jenkins.io. Reconfigure. This is the one I want to configure. Oops, just a minute. I have to press my security key. But what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to run my IDE hmm. on the cloud. So just a minute. Retry. Oh, come on, you silly thing. External security key. Touch it. There we go. Okay. So now what I've got to do is I've got to allow a, oh, where is my configuration? Select repository. So I need to add one more repository. Jenkins.io. So Xenob, the idea here is this would allow you to, instead of running it on your local computer, you hmm. would do your development through this web page. And so here I'm going to select a new project, a new workspace, and it's doing a build of it. Wow. And it's going to have the environment and I can actually watch it. I can view it. We're, we've got Jean-Marc Neeson who has agreed to do some highlighting of how you use this more effectively. So I think that's at least a good a good first starting way to get going. No, now, now that okay, that doesn't sure, Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, as in, I was like, this looks much easier than having to set it up on your machine and all that. Yeah, well, and I, I agree. I think it is easier. And the, the benefit for me is as, as the configuration changes, the Git pod configuration on the, on the repo is updated and you get the configuration changes. So if something, something gets adjusted, we're using okay. some newer version of this or that or the other thing, mm -hmm then that's automatically happens for you and you don't have to remember to update your own computer. Okay. Now, now that doesn't, that doesn't give you immediate um, solution to the problem. What you'd have to do is, so what would a user do? What would a new con a contributor do? And they would register for Gitpod. Uh, fork the Jenkins, the Jenkins.io repository to their private repository, to their, their personal, yeah, just fork the repository, you understand the verb, mm -hmm. and um, start a Gitpod project from that Jenkins.io repository, and then mm -hmm. submit pull requests. And they might even be able to, and that I think is what it takes, but we may want to invite Jean-Marc to attend one of our sessions here or schedule for an earlier time of the day. We're after Jean-Marc's end of day right now. So it might be good if we, we invited him next week and schedule ourselves a few hours early and we could do this same conversation with him doing a demonstration for us. That sounds really great. Okay, so let me put a note, Mark propose 
a time for next week when Sean Mark could show us how it how it show us how it works for him. Then what we could do is we could even have potentially try a tutoring session. Zinab, have you or Elizabeth start your own environment and we could see, okay, does it work for you as well as it did for him? Mm. Uh, Mark, should we have an issue? We, we've not been filing issues like we should. I'm very guilty. Um, should we have an issue to update contributing.adoc to reference Gitpod? Once we know it works, works and works yeah. well, yes. Yeah, so so what what I would like before we update the contributing is we would we would assure that it works and then hopefully have Jean-Marc record a video video that mm. shows and this is how you do it. Right. Yeah. I was thinking something like that. So we wouldn't have to add a lot to contributing. Right, exactly. Well, and and the other is by doing it as a video, we can now we can now reference that video and note okay it was recorded at this point this is how gitpod behaved now two months later when they change we we alter the, we record the, a new video and put it there instead so zinab does that i mean i don't want to I don't want to suggest that you not do a setup on Windows. You are certainly no, welcome to do it, and it should work. This is much better because mm -hmm. I was already thinking of um, having to go through all that process I went through because I remember I had a lot of issues trying to set it up the first time. So, which was why I was even looking if I could get something that would make it more straightforward and easier for me because, truth be told, I had forgotten a lot of the steps because I didn't document it then. So that's why I was suggesting if there's nothing so I can document it now in case something like this happens again. But if there's something that is, I'll be happy to try Gitpod. <laughs> Great. Well, and, and and that would if 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 you'd be willing to share your experiences next week and say, hey, I tried it and here are the problems I had, that would also be very good for us. Yeah. Just sure. to know, so, hey, if you have problems, we want to know. Yeah. So um once we're able to um have the session with um, John Mark. Um, I'll try it after then. So if um, I have any issues, I'll let you know. But um, also, you mentioned something about um, a certain number of hours or something. I don't know. I didn't quite catch that. Oh, yeah. So what that is, is because gitpod.io doesn't want to give you everything all for free, Okay. They will they will offer you as an open source contributor some some number of hours total per month of CPU time that you get to use, and and what we found so if you were to if you want to see examples of Gitpod in use, go mm -hmm. to the let's look at Darren Pope. Oh, here I know where we can find it in the contributing to open source document. There is this link to tutorials on, here we go, to live stream videos. And I'm going to put a link into this, to this location into our notes here so that we've got them recorded. Example of other applications of gitpod.io in the tutorial. Whoops, and it's contributing to open source. And let me embed one of the video links just to be sure we get it. So here's this video. What this is, is this is five hours of video. Mm. Of five that Darren and I created do. And what it happens is Darren uses um, Gitpod in hit this case to do plugin development, hmm. not just not just Jenkins.io development, but plugin development, and and it works quite well. Let's see if I can find the exact link because if I remember right, he provided one. Nope, not in this one. Part two, maybe. No, maybe part three. Because he and I had that discussion about, hey, this 
this tool makes it easy. I don't see it now. I'll have to I'll have to look for it separately. I'm confident that we had a segment where we talked about this is how you do Gitpod. Oh yes, here it is. Gitpod discussion for the test ng plugin. So this is this is actually a video demonstration of using Gitpod to do plugin development, not just Jenkins.io development. So forgive my just rambling there, Zenob. Is that mm-hmm. is that what you were is, does that address your question well enough? Um so um I think I have a follow-up question. My the follow-up question is so does that mean that if the hours, the free hours they give you for the month elapse, you have to pay to be able to continue using Git for that month? I th- I believe so, yes. And now the way I got, they also have an open source contributor program. So your okay. question was if hours expire or if hours are exhausted, right? If you've used all the hours that are available, what's next? And the answer is um, apply to be an open source contributor. And then they gave, they, I think they've given me much many more hours as a result of that. Okay. So did did that, and yes. I don't have the details on where the link is for that, but if we get to that point, let me yeah. know, because I had a conversation with Darren and with the Gitpod people about how you do that registration. So I've got it in my notes. I just don't have it convenient. All right, no problem. That answers my question. Thank you. All right, great. Um, could Gitpod be used if one just needs... Um, a little reference installation of Jenkins to look at quickly. A reference installation of Jenkins, probably not, okay. because it's focused on compilation and development. Right. And, okay. And so it's really not, it's not set up to do. Um, it's not set up to do just start an application. There, there are plenty of places that will do that. If you want to just do a, a light Jenkins installation, there are, let's go to the Jenkins docs and we can point to some of the people that offer those. For instance, uh, let's see, no, is this? Nope, here we go. It's down here. Hmm, I have to think about that. What we have is we have a bunch of cloud providers like Oracle and um, Amazon that provide, and Google, that provide recommended solutions for um, their cloud installation. Now, where is that? That's kind of embarrassing that I don't remember immediately where it is. Oh, oh, I know why that, I, it's because it's on the install page. Here we go, so slow brain. These things, deploying Jenkins in public cloud, if you need to do a, a lightweight, quick experiment, deploying to a public cloud is a great choice. And each of these has their guide, for instance. So AWS has a whole series of things on, hey, this is how you do it with AWS. And here's the same for Google Cloud. And likewise for IBM Cloud, here's theirs on look, this is how you run a a Jenkins on their cloud or Oracle has theirs. And each of them provides really good instructions on, hey, look, here's how you can do a a Jenkins installation on our cloud. Okay. For some reason, I'm having trouble getting a little thing going on my computer and it annoys me. And I was thinking, oh, maybe I can just sidestep it, but I think I should still do it. Yeah, I suspect in, in your case, you probably don't want the cost or the hassle of deploying on a public cloud. Right. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. So, so we've sort of handled this one for new contributors. Zenob, anything else you need there on new contributors? Okay. If we go on to the next question. Um, no, that's it. Okay. All right, so Meg, we had review outstanding PRs from previous. 
do we have anything new on those or? Uh, I let's see if some, maybe some of them have actually been merged. Ah. So this one's been merged. Oh, good. good. Okay. So we can just take that out. It's merged. Okay. May have merge conflicts with this one. And yes, it does have merge conflicts. Would you like to resolve oh. those conflicts? Oh, we can. Yeah, I could go look at it. I didn't look at it last night. So total conflicts, it's got two conflicts. And if you're feeling bold, we could do the conflict resolution live. Okay. Um, let's see, that is from that. And what is the old one? Ah, so I think this is Daniel's text. This is the new text. Um, shouldn't, shouldn't we just include, oh, oh, I think I know what this is, Meg. I'm going to propose the change. I believe other tips and tricks is a new addition. Ah, right? uh -huh. and Daniel made a new addition. So the reason we're seeing conflict here is just because there are two new additions. So I think what we do is we take Daniel's text, put it right there. And I think this would resolve the conflict. Uh -huh. Does that make sense to you? I think so, yes. Okay, all right. Now the next conflict then is, oh, oh, this is more text from Daniel. And this, I believe, should go up here. Like that. Right. So does that seem sensible to you? I think so. Of course, one needs to read and think about it, but I'll go back and do that. But yes, I think that, yeah. I'm sometimes oh. amazed at what Git figures out on its own and then it'll barf on something else. It seems simple. <laughs> yes, right. So are you okay if I mark this as resolved and push that sure. change? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, now it still needs to be reviewed, etc. But at least the conflict right. has been resolved. And we should see that as a nice, a relatively clean change when you look at what's changed. Just a minute. So this is Yeah, so double check that this is saying what you want it to say. I think we did the right resolution, but just in case we made a mistake. And now you had another question on, on this one. And I um, haven't looked to see if it's got conflicts. Oh, this one, this one is a long standing one that that really needs complete revisit, right? I mean, there's, there's, uh, an, and, and this one may ultimately end up being closed because Daniel has recreated most of this content already. Okay. This one is, is one of the embarrassing ones to address a question that, that Zenob had asked earlier. The embarrassment is we've had some submissions that are sitting for a very long time and haven't been reviewed or have had reviews that have comments that say this needs changes, but we need to take action and either make the changes or close the pull request. Then there are some that are marked as on hold that I think probably fall in that category, right? Right, exactly, yep. Or at least should have a, um, they got marked on hold, but they don't have a comment to explain why, you know, that these are two beloved contributors and one of them is going to quit if they don't win this argument or <laughs> right you know uh, something you know i mean there's there's no indication or this is on hold because there's a new feature under development mm -hmm. that's a different situation so exactly yep you you described it well things that are there there is a lot of cleanup that we need to do on the jenkins.io 
pull request list, right? Having 35 open documentation pull requests is unreasonable. That, that's just means we've got a lot of work to do to decide which of these we should keep and which should just be closed. Yeah. Okay. Ready for next topic or? Sounds good to me. Okay, so we had this question on this one, crumbs for anonymous access. Yeah, so this one was the one where Martin want, this is suggesting to describe something and you had suggested, hey. And Daniel thinks it's dangerous and that's, I'd suggested this text desperately needs, of course needs to be reviewed by Daniel. Right. But... So I think this one, the, the best answer may just be, hey, is the, should we close this or resolve it? Um, actually, because something I did not know is you said there's a way to to ping both Martin and Daniel to look at this again. Um, well, he so, so or... he's already been requested. Daniel's been asked to review it already. So the usual way would then be to to just do exactly what you did here, which is put an at reference to them. OK, so so that's that's pretty much the extent of what you can do if if we want to hoist it to them again, it's we just put it in here, Daniel Beck, and uh, would the extra text that Meg has proposed, proposed by Meg, be enough to address your concerns? Okay, comment. So there, at least we've asked the question. Yeah, okay, yeah. Good. Good. Okay. All right, and then one more. This one was migrate launching. Okay, this one is from Cynthia Iradukundu, and it's got, okay, it's got wiki references that I don't want to merge. Yeah, see, and I think Oleg's concern on this one is that yeah. Okay, we've we've got a bunch of conversation here, and I think this one may ultimately end up being closed just because. We'd, we'd probably do better to put this in another poll request. Okay. I don't think I was the one who flagged this one. Did somebody else add this to the list? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, so this one was here. Maybe it's just a bad hyperlink. Don't know, Meg. Good Possibly, question. Possibly, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, so I think I think on this one, it's time I'm just going to take the initiative here and close it and say that we need to need to rework. Need to need to rework this in a new pull request, rather than carrying this one. Um, sorry to do this to Cynthia, but I think it's the simplest approach for us, acknowledging that it's we need more discussion of how you do agent launch and how that agent launch should be described on the site. And then should we have an issue? How do we keep this from getting forgotten? Should we have an issue about it that points to the old? Yeah, I think there actually is an, an issue. issue already. Yeah, so there's this one and this one so we've got this migrate thing is what she was working on and this one let's see if it does migrate if it already redirects oh it doesn't okay yeah so so both those are reminders that we've got work to be done on this launching thing should we annotate those with the history of what we're doing here so that somebody oh good idea yeah and i think it may actually already be there see here's here's 
Oleg's observation ah. that, look, we've got this kind of documentation already, and we could redirect to those pages instead of having them on Jenkins.io. And this has been merged, and the redirect would go to a page that looks like this. Let's see if I can find it. So this is inbound agent. So it would point to docs inbound. It would be like this. Uh -huh. And for me, this is a workable page, right? This, this tells, describes it, and it's done right inside the uh, inside the thing that maintains this Jenkins remoting. Okay, is now is there are there appropriate links from Jenkins IO someplace? There are none. So that's that's so we need and, a link. right. We would need a link from Jenkins IO to this page, and this page needs a link instead of going to the wiki, this distributed builds things, it needs to link back to Jenkins.io, which contains much of the same material now. Right. And there's and there's more about that in that big PR that's sitting out there too. Okay. Should keep an eye on this one. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, any other outstanding PRs, Meg, that are on your mind or that you'd like to be sure we review? No, I should probably go back and do more reviews of what's out there and maybe, maybe that could be a start for a triage to make a list of those that we need to look at. Okay. Speed it up a little bit. Ah, good. Yeah, and this one is somebody else just picked it up and fixed a problem that we had marked as a good first issue. Ah. Uh -huh. So I'm going to approve it and merge it. And now we'll see that a good first issue just got closed. Oh, nope, it didn't. And it should have been. Okay, it didn't get it attached. So... Uh, number just a minute i've got to do this bookkeeping while i'm here that way it's it's properly annotated so it was 4819 good very good okay That's what I was looking for. All right. So we just got benefit from our good first issue exercise. <laughs> a special thanks to Ravi for doing it. He had just asked a question. How can I help? All right. Anything else on, on outstanding pull requests? Okay. The next topic is contribute on idea review. And so Zenob, this is where you are a, a target for this one. We had had a discussion in the Asia time zone session of Doc's office hours, proposing some additional candidate ideas. Well, and go ahead, Zenob. No, nothing. Okay, so here were the here were the ideas that we had, and I'll we'll do more of this discussion after I get this posted into community.jenkins.io. Inclusive naming. You had you and I had discussed that one earlier, and we thought yes, the replacement of master with 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 controller and slave with agent and blacklist with approve and etc. was all good. So that you were great with. This one we did last year, and it wasn't as successful as as we would have liked but we could consider it again. Then this other one, if you've got people who want to do Java and are interested in automated testing, we've got <laughs> tests that need conversion from an older J unit format to the newer J unit format. Okay. And now last year, if I remember correctly, most of the candidates had JavaScript experience and weren't terribly interested in Java. Is that yes. likely again this year? Um, yeah, because, you know, most of um, people starting out in tech usually start out with um, web de development, JavaScript, and things like that. 
So um, most of the time, we usually have more people um, with JavaScript skills, but that's not to say that we won't still get people that have um, Java skills and um, things like that. So, so Mark, what do we have for JavaScript development for JavaScript testing? So, for we don't have well all of the JavaScript tests that we have would actually be written in Java and use a, a, a web browser to exercise it. So that would make them a particularly poor fit for, for students just starting in JavaScript because it's, right. it's even worse to write an automated test than it is to write in of JavaScript than it is to write JUnit based tests. Right. So if, if there are some Java interested We can certainly we could certainly consider that, but JavaScript is is not this thing, and the the things that we've got in Jenkins related to JavaScript are probably not well suited to first time developers. We've okay, had some. Um, okay, um, so um, you remember there is a form for project ideas, so that um, form actually request for all this information so that when we are assigning someone to the project, we'll use those requirements. So it's request for the skills that are required to work on the project and also the skill level, if it's beginner, intermediate, whatever. So once we have all those information, that's what we use to assign um, suitable contributors to the project. Good, all right, so, so that we, we ought to include that's a that's a good point. We ought to yeah. assure that we can answer the project idea questions yeah. in our proposal. Yeah. Good. All right. Now another topic was fix multiple tutorials. In particular, the getting started tutorial has some significant gaps. One of my worries about this one is most of the time creating an effective tutorial needs more skills than a first time, a first time person has, right? They can tell us what's wrong, but they can't tell us how to make it right. So we could, we could consider instead, maybe test multiple tutorials and report problems. That's better for a first, that's good for a first time user, but it's not a development project. It's a testing project. Yeah. And I assume that your that the She Code Africa Contributhon candidates want programming projects more than testing projects. We want um, all, um, all areas, all kind of projects. We are not limiting it to development, if we could even get projects that have to do with design or even um, community management, we are open to different, because we have um, contributors from different areas. Last year, we had to drop a lot of them because we didn't have projects that suit their skills. So ah, yeah, yeah, so design, community management, outreach program, if you're looking for someone that could, um, work with probably the outreach team on programs and things like that. We are open to all those kind of projects also. Okay, all right. Well, so let me, hang on, let me make a note of this. So community management, um, the, oh, uh, design. Design, yeah. Okay, so so that that could be a fun one because for instance, well, I've got to show you this. Uh, on Jenkins.io as part of Hacktoberfest in the artwork collection, we received new submissions. And this is very much, very much something that someone who has visual skills is a great help for. I got to show you this one because it is so cool. Duchess, where, there it is. Here is Duchess France and their oh. contribution. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
and and it it's just oh that's cool what a great oh. what a great picture and and that kind of thing is quite valuable to the jenkins project because people love the logos and yeah. if we had a if we had a jenkins africa or something like that from a, somebody with design skills with art skills that yeah. would be a lot of fun but again i i don't know that that's a month long project but doing doing art like that is, inter- is that yeah. feasible do you get any applicants for those kinds of things um yeah we get um applicants um designers yes we do however um, and we, we could mention the diversity issue sorry go ahead see oh, go ahead i'm sorry no no problem so yeah we do get designers and um but the how would i put it we need to get um or rather have a project that will last them a month as you mentioned something that will keep them busy for at least a month mark you mentioned um, are they what sort of design are they interested in like user interface design hmm. Because Mark, you mentioned that in March we're getting major changes to the user interface. Are there any possible projects related yeah. to this? Um, would there be leftover work, do you know? I, I, there might be, but the challenge there is that the people who are doing that work right now uh, are not, are, seem highly unlikely to say, oh, I'm gonna take somebody on who's fresh, who's had oh. no experience. They're, they're very advanced expert people who are doing very, very fast evolution of, of the UI and, and saying, oh, I'm gonna tutor somebody who's brand new will slow them down and ultimately slow them down so badly they'd probably say, no, I'm not gonna do any more tutoring. So I don't see how a lot of opportunity. If the person is not a beginner, how about if the person is in an experienced designer also uh, and who is just even, looking to contribute to open source right and even even then i would hesitate to put attempt to put them on this because some of our most experienced people on the jenkins project have yeah. already realized hey these two people that are advancing the ui are are way ahead of us Okay. And, and so, so I don't think that's now, however, we might consider web design improvements for the Jenkins.io site. Okay. There are certainly things um, for page navigation. Hmm. This is hmm. one that, that Meg and I have discussed where if we look at Jenkins.io, I'm gonna show you an example of, of good and then I'm gonna show you an example of bad. So here's the example of, of good, where when I go to this page, it opens, notice the expanding and contraction of things on the left, yeah. right? Hey, that's, that's pretty reasonable navigation. I, I get to see this. It tells me where I am. If I click one of these pages, it highlights that page. Okay, that's good. Now I'm gonna show you the bad. So here's the bad in the developer section. When I go here, all right, I pick something like this. I get no hint anywhere over here. Oh, there it is. But if I pick this, no expanding, no contracting, it's the same page or it's the same site. And yet I have a terrible experience, a a less positive experience here in this section than I did in the other section. So this is a place where we would need somebody, but this is a development experience that we need someone with development experience, but they would need to be willing to work in the framework that is used to create this site. Okay. So, so that's, that's certainly, and there's probably a month or more of work there. Hmm. This sounds like a good um, project idea. So then again, it will just be um, a question of just highlighting um, the project's requirement properly so that we could get. So at the end of the day, um, why I advise having more project ideas is that it's not compulsory or um, it doesn't guarantee that we're going to get people, 
But then again, if we have the project ideas out there and we get people that qualify, we can assign them. Then if we don't, then that means we just don't work on those ideas. So that's it. Good. Okay. Yeah. So so we can we can bring those proposals and then you use them as part of your recruiting to try to find people who are interested in participating. Yeah. Good. All right. So let me make a note here. Oops, not there. It's this I have a document. Question regarding this. Yes, go ahead. All right. Um, Zainab, you were saying something about um, designers. Then, yeah. Do you mean just web designers, or you also mean um, product designers as well, like um, UI, UX, or just web designers? Because I think UX. this is something that. Okay. You are UX and um, also web designers. Um, okay. Yeah. All right. How about um product management? Don't you think it's it would also like fall in place? What do you think? Yeah. So as I mentioned earlier, um, what we're trying to do with this program is to capture all the fields possible. So, but then again, also, we are limited. Yeah we are limited by the project ideas that we are able to get. So if we don't get project ideas around product management or project management, it means that we cannot, we cannot put people in those, that's what it means. But what we want is to be able to cover all these areas. As much as possible. As much as possible, exactly. But yeah, so that's it. So Elizabeth, I'm, I'm, I'm having difficulty understanding how you would envision product management or project management being involved in, in a relatively short-term thing like SheCode Africa. I, I rely on my product managers to know deeply all sorts of things about the product and how it behaves. And, and I can't imagine getting one of them started in the month that we have for SheCode Africa Contributeathon, help me understand better what you were envisioning there. Okay, no. Um, the reason the reason why I brought it up was because because um was when Zainab said that we could um actually try out other things, and she mentioned community management and design. So that was why I just thought about it, and I'm like, okay, it wouldn't be bad if product management too is part of it. Um, is a part of it. But I, 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 I totally get what you just said now um, about it. And I think um, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, thank you. Okay, got it, understood. All right. Well, we, we have almost reached our time. Are there any other things in the last one or two minutes before we close? Uh, no, that's just for me. Okay, so Zinab, I'll see if I can get time scheduled with Jean-Marc and I'll propose an alternate time for this meeting for next week. Actually, while you're all here, if Meg, I know this will be too early for you, so I'm just asking Zinab and Elizabeth, if we move this meeting two or three hours earlier, would it be okay for the two of you or is that too early in your day and that's not workable? Just for next week, just a one-time thing, so that Jean Marc could join us. For next week, uh, uh next week Thursday. Uh, no, next week Thursday. It will be convenient for me because I have an appointment at okay. party, and um, I'm not sure if I'll be done. Um, how long it will take and all that. So. If it's two hours earlier, then I'm not sure I'm going to be able to meet it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is Mark will send a doodle poll to Elizabeth, Zinab, and Jean-Marc to find a time. And we'll just record it. Exactly. So that's one thing I wanted to say that if at the end of the day we're not able to get this thing and I'm not able to attend, I'll just watch the recording. Well, and and I think it'd be good if you were there to ask your questions, 
but if okay. you're not available, we have the option to record it. Yeah, uh, we will record it no matter what, but it's better to have an audience that can ask questions and, hey, what about this? And what about that? Mm. Okay, so I'll send a, a poll and then we'll, we'll plan to record that session and do it as a question and answer session up to an hour. All right. Okay, anything else before we close? Nothing from me. Okay, thanks everybody. Thanks. All right, bye. bye. See you next week.